Now a couple of days ago it looked like spring, you know. It was nice sky and then today uh, we got a severe snowstorm warning in Ontario. Like this particular area, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo. Uh, they expect 10 to 15 centimeters of snow which is uh, four to six inches and I'm sitting in my yard I'm all hooked up to my uh, trailer and I'm waiting for that guy over there he's gonna help me uh, unload the Jeep because uh, I booked a load right so I'm heading to Tennessee uh, I will be loading uh, Friday, hopefully, in Jackson, Tennessee. It's a CAT uh, 336, so 36 ton excavator. They say it's 85,000 pounds, but I don't think it's more than 80. Unless it has some crazy bucket, you know, or stick or something like that. And, uh, yeah, and so I dropped the trailer here. And I was sitting at the Walmart with the truck because I'm so long. See like those pickup trucks over there? That's where they have these car carrier trucks. Like the guys that rent this space, they just leave their, you know, personal vehicles over there. And you can tell these two are buds because they drive exactly the same uh, <laughs> Dodge Ram. <laughs> Except one is older, one is newer. You can tell by the headlights. But anyway, see, if I stay like this, it's very hard for them to back into that space. And so, because you see all those trucks, that's, you know, those guys are hooked up to van trailers. That's the normal length, right? But I'm like 85 feet long. Of course, I can always uh, lift the booster. But I want to keep it down because I want to use it, you know, even though it's, let's say, 80,000 pounds, I still want to have you know eight axles because you never know uh, you might need to you know push it back you know depending again on the stick on the bucket you know how big is the stick because they're all different uh, and so I'm gonna keep the booster just in case and also it makes it much easier to go around corners you know and now I'm very um, I'm very skillful at blocking this like I know how to block it how to unblock it like you see that's how I backed in here right I, I went in a straight line and when I saw that the stinger was in a straight line I went back I drained all the air and I put those uh, arms down to prevent articulation and I just backed you know so everything was cool and so yeah I want to keep it down but I want to leave the Jeep because uh, I checked the cost of permits from Jackson Tennessee back to Toronto uh, so the crane is ready back to Toronto it's uh, 2100 US and I would need escorts in like three states and without the Jeep it's 850 US for permits and no escorts anywhere so it's just Tennessee like I'm going from Tennessee, Ohio, Kentucky, uh, wait, Indiana, Michigan, something like that. And I got across in uh, Detroit. And hopefully I'll be here probably next uh, Wednesday. Because it's one of those 72 hour rules. And I was bugging them for a copy of the email from CBP. They only got it now and I see it says submitted. February 26th, which is today. So, so I said, you guys realize now I cannot cross until Monday on the way back to Canada because tomorrow, uh, Thursday, it's one day. Friday, it's day two. Saturday, Sunday, don't count. And then Monday at like 11 o'clock, it'll be 72 hours or three days. But, you know, and I said, you know, we'll have to renegotiate the rate if I have to sit there longer than Monday. But this time these guys know all about uh, uh, original documents because you know the 72 hour rule thing uh, export from US requires original uh, bill of sale or manufacturer's uh, certificate and my broker my freight broker says uh, I will get these at the shipper she says make sure they give you originals so at least it sounds like she knows what she's doing sure they did it before but quite a few American brokers are not familiar 
they will just give you a copy of the bill of sale you know and then I always have have to argue with CBP at the border they look at me like I'm what you never did this before I said yes sir I did but you know the broker never did this before well you have to tell her we need the original you know bill of sale at least to manufacturers uh, manufacturers certificate of origin and uh, if we cannot get any of those we need a document from a notary saying that those documents not available <laughs> that's what once they told me if there's no manufacturer certificate of origin you have to supply us with the official letter this that states that fact there's a, there's no manufacturer certificate of origin is not available because of and list the reasons and then it must be signed and notarized and dated jeez so anyway it looks like this time everything is good all right the crane guy is, is ready let me just go uh, i hope these guys will be gone by now you know then he could have come from the side but no so now i have to pull forward and park somewhere where he can uh where he can reach this uh, jeep but i already took all the chains off so we're all ready all right
บายบายบายขอบคุณสตีเวนดีงานฉันจะอยู่ที่นี่ดังนั้นเราจะขึ้นแบบนี้กับเนื้อและเราจะขึ้นแบบนี้มันจะดูแปลกแต่ถ้าคุณมีนี้3 plus 1มันเพิ่มน้ำหนักในด้านหลังมากกว่าถ้าคุณมีแค่4ขึ้นนี้ขึ้นไปข้างหลังฉันจะต้องเอาขึ้นไปจากรถ Away from the trailer, and uh, this neck will help me do that. <sighs> All right, yeah. So the guy will just park it over there because I said I'm coming back uh, Wednesday, and when I come back, I don't need him. I can just hook up to the Jeep and put it in this spot. I don't know. Maybe uh, because I'm not sure what my next load is. Will I need the Jeep or not? Because see, I was hoping I would use it all the time, but that's not the reality. So, anyway, yeah, I hope this guy does not hit me. Because yeah, I had to park like this to make room for this guy, right? And I cannot back right now because I already opened my locks on the stinger. <laughs>